In our last episode, we talked about the need for a plan as well as outside help from someone or some group who had already begun to find their way out of prison, who had made it out. Recently, I received an email from a listener. She wanted to know if the fourth way system could help her to face the fears that she was having because she was in a panic and being overcome by those fears. And if it wasn't, was there anything that could help her in these teachings? You may be asking yourself, well, if this is the fourth way, what's the first, the second, or the third way? And is there a fifth way? And is there a sixth way? And what's the best way? All good questions. I'm not as familiar with all the other ways as I am with the fourth way, but this system says that there are four ways to escape or to achieve real eye, real will, real inner unity within oneself. And this is really the goal for those who wish to become enlightened or wh those who wish to gain control over their inner lives and their outer lives. The first way is the way of the fakir. This path uses the body as a focal point to achieve inner unity or healing of our fragmented personalities. It's seriously apart from the world. You may have seen television programs or perhaps a movie that documented the way of the fakir. There are people who practice this way. They're practitioners. You'll see them standing or sitting in one position for a seriously long amount of time, sometimes for an entire lifetime, but often for years at a time until their very bodies atrophy and they can no longer use them. The second way is the way of the monk, and it approaches inner integration through the heart, through obedience and devotion, but apart from the world in a monastery or monastic environment, which it shares really with the first way. The second way, the monastic way, is a way that most people are familiar with, at least theoretically, a way that approaches integration through the heart, through obedience, devotion. The third way is the way of the yogi. It approaches the goal through the intellect, knowledge, and its disciplines. That, too, is usually in a school apart from the world. But the fourth way, also known as the way of the good householder, or the way of the balanced man, or even the way of the sly man, approaches the aim using all three of the other ways. This path is practiced in life, not apart from life in some kind of a school or apart from life in some kind of a monastery. The advantage of the fourth way is it's faster, and once one has achieved the goal, one has more at the end of it than one has if one uses simply the first way. The first way, you can imagine that one may not have a lot of knowledge if one has sat in one position in one place for 40 years, and that way solidified the will, crystallized the will, joined the entire personality under one will. The difficulty is you don't focus on just one way with the fourth way, but rather three ways. So you have to learn how and when to apply which way, and you have to know where to apply it within yourself. Another problem that Westerners seem to have is we usually fail to grasp that there is no easy shortcut. You can't whip out your plastic, slide it through the credit card swiper, and get everything delivered to you via the internet or via email or via uh, UPS. All these paths are long, arduous, and difficult, take years of study, and a lot of effort and practice. The fourth way is the path that I've chosen or the path that's chosen me, but that really doesn't matter whether I've chosen it or it's chosen me. What does matter is that it's not for everyone, but it is for some people. Perhaps it's for you. Many people find that they already use some combination of ways in their spiritual journey. Perhaps the monk and the yogi or the monk and the fakir. Without a system of right knowledge, though, it's hit and miss at best, making success a very iffy proposition. The fourth way is a complete system that takes one from start to finish. It's important to start where one is, not where one would like to be or where one imagines oneself to be. This is one of the big problems with Westerners. We imagine that we are enlightened. We imagine that we are conscious. We imagine that we do know. Unfortunately, all of this is just imagination. But back to the email from our listener. Is it possible that the fourth way could help her to overcome her fears or to face her fears? And the answer to that is yes, but it's going to take study, it's going to take practice, and it won't happen overnight.